going on. So for those who I have not met before, I'm Brian Smith. I'm a self-taught full stack dev, mostly dealing with Mern stack. Uh, started learning web development, uh, I guess last around last May. So not super crazy experienced or anything, but I've been having to do a bunch of projects lately that involved web scraping. And so I thought it would be cool to kind of do a little primer for those of us who are not super familiar with it. It's not always something that you have to use or get to use in your day to day. Uh, a lot of the times we get to just work with pre-made APIs or things like that where someone has gone and gotten a nice chunk of data for us to work with. But unfortunately, it's not always quite that easy for us. And that's kind of where the, the web scraping thing comes in. So this is just going to be kind of a kind of a, an introduction. It's not going to go super, super in depth. Um, this is mostly for the uninitiated. So right out of the gate, let's just talk about what we mean when we talk about web scraping. So uh, I think we're all familiar with how browsers work, web browsers work. You give it a specific URL and then the browser is going to send an HTTP request to that URL and it's going to get back a chunk of data, uh, HTML, JavaScript, CSS. It's going to get back this chunk of data and it's going to render it for us on the page so that we can see it. So web scraping is essentially allowing us to do this process of going and fetching data from a specific URL, but instead of displaying it, we're just going to get back this chunk of data and we're going to parse it for ourselves to pull out of it any specific items of data that we want for ourselves. So this is just, it's exactly the same process as the browser, but we go in ourselves instead of the browser doing the work of rendering things. So what can we do with this? So for example, uh, an application that you could use this for would be to go to a website perhaps and get all of the links from the page. Like let's say we're building a web crawler that's gonna feed a search engine. Using web scraping would be a way we could do this. We could go to the page and we can pull all the HTML out and we can just go look for any a tags and pull out the href uh, uh, property from these tags and have these links. And then we can go visit all of those links and pull all the links from all of those pages, etc. Uh, that's just one small example of something we can do. What I've been using it for, something a little bit different. Like I said, um, a lot of the times we work with pre-made APIs that give us a nice chunk of data back. Uh, and I found myself needing to use an API for meetup.com for a project I was doing and went to find out that there was no longer such an API available publicly. So what I can do is I can use web scraping to visit these pages, pull down all the HTML, and then find the piece of the page that I want and just pull out that data for myself so I can use it. So all this is well and good to talk about. Let's actually jump in and look at a little bit of how this is gonna work. So I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. We can fix that pretty quickly. <laughs> so probably the simplest example of how web scraping works would be to take something like kind of your basic should work now. Your basic Unix command line utilities like CURL and wget things like that or links. Uh, let's see if I. Did I share correctly? I may have not shared correctly. Sure. What does everybody see? Browser, Zoom, post attendee. Okay, so let's see. Do we now see a terminal window? Yes. Cool, then it's working exactly as planned. So if we were to do something like, I've got a little example here that we could use. So if we do CURL and we go get, this is just a, an example webcast that I found, vimcasts.org slash episodes slash archive. And then we're gonna tell it to show this to us. We're just gonna, that's what the, the two point to the and one is, is just gonna allow us to print this to our screen, except that's because I said orb, let's not say orb instead, HTTP slash slash themcasts.org episodes archive two less than and one and try that again. So what we see, oh dear, it's moved. Well, that doesn't help our case. But what you could see here, the example is still basically the same. We have received back an HTML page. 
So what we could do if we wanted to get a specific element out of this page, I expected to see a bunch of links uh, and we were going to use that as the example, but we don't have that because this page is moved. So what we can look at, however, is let's say I wanted to go in and find all the list items from this page. So I could use a tool like grep, for example, to use regular expressions to pull out these bits of the page. Uh, like I could tell it to, you know, get all the lines that start with angle bracket, li angle bracket, and it would give me this line, this line, this line, etc. And then it's up to me to use um, either string manipulation or further regex to kind of pull out the bits that I want. And this would work the same regardless of whether these are links, whether these are list items, whatever it is. It's kind of a pain though. Like, for example, I have a piece of code up here. We'll get rid of that. I have a piece of code here that would, this would effectively visit this website using links, which is another, another uh, HTTP client kind of like CURL is. And then it would look for anything that starts with HTTP. And then it's gonna filter that further to find things that are in this site's MP3 directory. And that's gonna give us all of the MP3 files. And then we can cycle through them with a for loop and then use wget to actually download them. So this is kind of the more complicated web scraping framework for how you would do this. But we have tools that make this an awful lot easier. And one of the tools I've been using is called Cheerio for JavaScript. So let's go look at what that is. So it's really simple to install. It's just a simple NPM package. You would install, you know, NPM install Cheerio. And then I also like to use node fetch just because I'm uh, more familiar with using the fetch API. Where did that go? Hang on, my computer's decided to be dumb for a minute. There we go. So I also like to use the node fetch because I'm more familiar with the fetch API. So if we wanted to go and do exactly the same thing we just did, let's use a, a better example. Let's say, let's go to the meetup page for Burrow Dev, for example. So I would just use fetch and then HTTPS uh, meetup.com slash Burrow Dev, I believe is what it is. And then we'll go get the, once we have it, we'll take the request and we will get the text, not .com, .text. And this is gonna just give us all the raw HTML from the page. And then once we have that, we are going to, hang on, I gotta move my little, my little meetup window out of the way. And then once we have that text, we're just gonna show it to ourselves so we can see what that looks like. So then we've got the text and we're going to just log the text. And now if we run this, we'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a little bit better. If we run node scrape.js, we're gonna get an awful lot of garbage. So this is all the stuff that we get to sort through. And we could actually take this and do regular expressions on this ourselves if we felt like. If we scroll through this far enough though, we'll be able to finally start seeing some tags, things of that nature. Maybe we won't see some tags. It's awful deep. It's a lot of garbage. But we can see we've got links in here. Uh, it's just a lot to dig through. So we can use Cheerio to make this process easier on ourselves. So what Cheerio is going to do is it's going to let us search through this page in a really, really similar way to jQuery. In fact, you, you use it almost exactly like jQuery. So if instead of going through all that nonsense, we wanted to let's say just find link tags from out of here. Once we pull down this text, we are going to load this into Cheerio, this text that we have. So we would do let uh, this dollar sign, which is how we're, it's gonna let us use uh, jQuery syntax with the dollar sign. Let the dollar sign equal Cheerio.load, and we're gonna load that text. And so now, we have access to all this HTML that we found using jQuery syntax. So I could go in here and I could say, uh, let's say let links equal, and we're gonna do jQuery syntax. We're just gonna look for A tags and we'll get the text out of all those A tags. So this dot text 
is a method that's associated with what we get back from these searches. This is going to give us an object. Uh, it's not exactly a DOM object, but it's the, basically the same idea as a DOM object. So if we were to do that, just get link tags and get the text from that, and then print those links, dot log links, and run this, we're going to get, what are we going to get? So now we have a whole different set of data. We have all of this. And this is just what is the text content of our links. Now, text content of links doesn't mean a whole lot. Like that's what we're gonna see on the page when we go into the, onto the website, but that's not really important to us. When we're dealing with links, what we're really concerned with is probably where the links actually go, right? So instead of using text, we have access to another method which is ATTR, that's gonna let us choose an attribute to go in and find the attribute. So if we choose the href attribute of these links that we have found, and then, oh, come on now, don't lag on me. And now we go console.log these links, we're gonna see something completely different. We're gonna see instead where these links go. And actually, we're only gonna get one because of the way this search works and the very first link that we have, hash MUP main. So probably something at the very, very, very top of the page, not super useful for us. So we don't want just this one, we don't want just this one link. We wanna be able to see all the links. So in order to do that, what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to take this object that we get, which is gonna be basically a list of all the different links that we found. And we can turn this into an array with a two array method. So once we've turned it into an array, now we can run a map function, just a regular JavaScript map function for each one of these links. And for each one of these links, we want to return the link attribute, not attributes, the attribute href, let's say. That will give us those attributes. Now, this is not actually going to work. Uh, and I'll tell you why, well, I'll just show you why here in a second. So it looks like it makes sense. We get all of the links, all the A tags. We turn them into an array. And then for each one of them, we're just gonna return into that array just what we did a second ago, the attribute function and get the href attribute. If we run this though, we're gonna get something that looks not quite right. Oh, we're gonna get an error link.attribute is not a function. And that is true. So what we actually have to do is anytime we want to use the methods that we get natively with Cheerio, we're going to have to use that, um, we're gonna have to use that dollar sign jQuery syntax. So if we go in here and just wrap that link in that syntax, now we're going to have access to all these methods like dot attr and dot text to get the pieces that we want out of here. So if we do this and now we log our links, you can see we have nice and neat access to all of the hrefs on this page. So really, really handy. Let's say now, now that we know kind of the basics of how this works, let's use an actual use case. This is something I really needed to do this week in order to put together an event bot for the Free Code Camp Nashville meetup group. I needed access to an API that would go into meetup.com, find all the tech related meetups in Nashville, give me their upcoming events, and then I have a Discord bot that will run on a cron tab and just spit out each day what's going on that day. It's pretty simple, as long as you have the API, which I do not have the API because it is for super ultra premium members that I am not one of. So let's go to meetup.com and let's just go to Burrow Dev here since that's what we're working with. Just go to Burrow Dev. So how do I get the information that I want out of here? I want this upcoming events and I want all of these events, I want to pull them down and get all the information out of them. So I want their name, I want where, or sorry, I want when they're happening, I want all this data. So how do I do that? Well, let's start with something a little bit simpler. Let's say I just want to get the, the name of the group. We'll start really simple. So what we'll do is we're just going to pull up our dev tools here. 
And sorry if this is a little bit small, let's see if we can make it bigger. Yeah, we can make it bigger. So I've got my dev tools open. I'm just gonna use my element picker and I'm gonna go to the element that I want. And I don't know if you can see this, it's a little bit small. Let's see if we can make it any bigger. It doesn't wanna get any bigger. So I don't know if you can read this, but it says we've got, this is an A tag with a class of group home header dash group name link. Yeah. I so that's exactly what we're gonna need to use for this. So if we get rid of all this nonsense, we can search for exactly that thing. So we've loaded Cheerio. Now let's try and get that, that name of the group. So let's let the group name equal, what is that? A dot, so first we open up our jQuery syntax, A tag with a class of, we can go ahead and use the dot selector, the, the class selector with the dot right there. And we'll say group home header dash group name link. And now we have access to that group name. And if we run this again, you may have noted, you may already know that this is not going to work. But just so you can see what kind of object we're working with here, let's just go ahead and run this. And you can see what these objects actually look like and what methods you have access to when you run it. So if we run this, we get this big honking JavaScript object which has you know a lot of some some relevant information some less relevant information but we have we have these bits and pieces so one of the things we actually do have here is attribs which um we can access attribs which has an object that is going to be all of the attributes of this link so for example the href will be inside this object um, we can actually access that without having to use the JavaScript syntax as long as we know that that's inside this element, which we do. We also have access to all the children of this element, the parents of this element, etc. cetera. Um, that's just a fun little extra. We're not really gonna use any of that stuff because that's they make it a lot easier than that for us. We don't have to go digging into the object structure. So what do we do instead? We use that text method that we get along with the Cheerio object. So if we run that, we should get just burrow.dev logged in our console down here. And you'll find that we do in fact get burrow.dev logged in our console. So that's how that would work. So what if we wanted to get these events? Let's do the same thing. We go to our element picker and we'll go down here to our event. So we see that this is a link tag with a class name of event card dash dash link. And if we go to the next one, that should be the same thing, event card dash dash link and it is. So we know that that's how we're gonna be able to select this. We get all of the event cards, event card dash tag, dash dash link elements. Once we're in there, what are we gonna do? Let's go ahead and get that first part out of the way. So it's an A tag and it's event card dash dash link. Now this is gonna give us the entire card and everything inside it but we need to get individual pieces. We wanna get the, uh, we wanna get this speaker event bit. We wanna get the title. We're gonna to wanna to get the, uh, the location, not the location, I keep saying location, the time. So if we wanna do that, we're just gonna go into our inspector and we're gonna find each one of those individual elements. So we go inside this div and we're gonna look for the next piece. This header's got its own div. And then event card head is a class that we're going to be working with here. And we just keep working our way down the line until eventually we run into the piece of data that we actually want. Keep working down the line. So here we have one. We have event time display text label secondary. And if we open that up, we should actually see another class. We have a time tag with a date time attribute. So we could use that to get the time if we wanted to. So we could go in here. We've already selected our, well, I guess this isn't group name anymore. We should change that. This is gonna be our uh, upcoming events. So this is gonna be a list of upcoming events. Well, now it's not. If we get rid of the text, now it's a list of upcoming events. So if we wanted to get something inside that upcoming event, what do we have to do? We can't select this again with this exact same context. 
So we have access to the find method, which will allow us to look inside an element that we have already selected with our jQuery syntax. So in this case, we could find the time tag. So we use the same kind of thing, find the time tag. And then once we find it, we can use the H or sorry, not the href. We use the attribute method that we've used before to get the date time attribute. And that will return us this UTC uh, Unix date time. So what is that date time attribute? And if all goes according to plan, which I think it should, then we should be able to print this and it will give us the time. So we console.log upcoming events. And we run it undefined. So that did not go according to plan. So the reason that that did not go according to plan is that this is going to be an array of items. And so to use it, we're going to have to turn it into an array. So we can do that with the to array method as we established earlier. And then once we've turned it to an array, we can then map it where for each item, we can take that item inside our jQuery syntax. And then we can find the, uh, what did I say it was? We find the time tag and we get the attribute of date time. And once we get that attribute, that's what we should end up with in our, in our upcoming events array. So the whole thing from the top is we select all the event cards, we turn them into an array, Oop, don't drag it. We turn them into an array. And for each one of those items, we're going to look inside that item, find the time tag, and then find the date time attribute of that time tag. And if we do that, it's thinking about it. Oh, we're not going to get anything at all because we're not logging this to the console. Maybe we should. Uh, where does that end? To array dot map. Now let's try it. Logging at console dot log upcoming events. And if we run that, we get a list of undefined. That's a whole lot of fun, isn't it? Probably should have uh, worked this out in advance, shouldn't I? So instead of looking at the date time attribute, which should actually work, what if we just selected one? Never mind. We'll go ahead and move on. That is, in fact, how it should work. You work out the details, uh, work out the details for each one of these elements in turn. So to see how this whole thing comes together as a whole picture, we can actually look at uh, the whole picture that I put together when I had to do this myself. So we can go here to I have the project datascrape.js, and we'll just go ahead and get these other file names out of the way. So this is a whole data scraping thing uh, all put together and ready to go. So we first we fetch, we uh, npm install our fetch, we npm install Cheerio, and then we have a get groups function, which we have down here. Or sorry, we don't have a get groups function down here. We have a get groups function in another file, and this is just going to reach into a database where I kept the links for all of the meetup groups. So that's just going to go find all the groups that are in that database and return them to us. And then we have each event has its own uh, mongoose model, which is just a list of all of the attributes of the event. So like the name of the event, the uh, date time of the event, and the name of the group that the event is associated with. So from there, we can follow the chain of events that we are working with. So we're starting the data scrape by first we're going to get all the upcoming events. Once we have those, uh, once we have those events, well, let's start with what happens when we go get them. So we have our get upcoming events function down here. Uh, we're going to get all our groups. So we have a list of URLs to look through. For each one of those groups, we're going to fetch the data for that group. Let's go down and look what that looks like. When we fetch the data, we're going to do the same process that we just looked at for that single page. It's the same process for the single page repeated a bunch of times for each of the groups that we have. So we load the text into Cheerio and then we're going to find 
the group home events list upcoming events uh, element, which is going to be the wrapper element for all the upcoming events on a page. Inside that we use the find element, or sorry, the find method, which we just talked about, to find a, a chunk class, which is what's going to separate those events into their individual cards. We're going to turn it into an array with the two array method. And then we're going to use the map method to get all of the data from each one. So for example, the date time is going to be the event dot find the time tag, and we're going to find that attribute date time. For some reason, it works great right here. <laughs> it didn't work at all when we did it just a second ago, but this is, uh, maybe you can see a difference in the syntax, but that is the, the way that it would be done. And then we're going to just do some basic validation to make sure that the event actually does have a time. And then we're going to get the link for that event out of the, um, the link tag for that event. So again, we wrap the event in the jQuery syntax to have access to its uh, access to its methods. We use the find method to go and get a sub element of the element that we're already in. And then we can get the text of the link to get the name of the event and then the href of the link in order to get the actual link to share with people. And then at the end of this, once we get all these events and all the data associated with them, we're just going to print them all to the screen. So if we run this, we should be able to see this whole process in action. So we'll just clear the screen real quick and we'll just run datascrape.js. And you should be able to see it happening as we go. So we start the event and now it's looking through each one at a time, telling us if it has found something or if it has not found something for each of the ones that we are looking for. And like I said, all of these, I just kind of manually entered all these into a database. In theory, if you knew what you were looking for, you could probably go and find all this stuff with a scraping method. Uh, it was too much work. I just went and looked at, I just went to the, the tech page on the meetup lookup and found everything within 50 miles in Asheville. So we are down to the ends should be just a minute longer. And once we have all of these events parsed and processed, then it should show us all of the data for each individual one. I know this is riveting entertainment, I'm sure. This is the great stuff. This is the good part. There should be, I think, 58 events or 58 groups in total. So we should be getting pretty close to the end. Once we get out of the Nashvilles, it starts to wrap up pretty fast. Thankful WordPress, cool. So now you can see if we go through all these list of events, we can see we've pulled out, for example, we've got the group name associated with the event. We've got the event name associated with the event. We've got the date and time associated with the event. So this is kind of how this whole process works. And you can apply this to any page where you have access to some differentiating characteristic for the elements that you're looking at. So like if your element is just a div that doesn't have a class and doesn't have uh, an ID or something like that, you're going to have a little bit of a harder time. But so far in all the projects that I've had to do this on, and I've had to do this on a few, I haven't run into anything like that. Like everybody's been really good about making sure things have nice labels. Uh, like this is a good example. This span has nothing associated with it in terms of ID or class or anything like that. But what you can do is you can go to its parent element, which does have that stuff, and then select this parent element and use the find method associated with these uh, Cheerio objects to search for a span within this element. And then you would find what you were looking for. So that's kind of the basics of how this whole thing works. Does anybody have any questions, comments, criticisms? How do I get my meeting back? I know it's in here somewhere. Oh, I'll stop sharing and I bet it'll bring it back. And it does. So I didn't see the chat. Is that relevant? Oh, no, that's just Alex saying bye. Questions, comments, criticisms? Akilah had one comment. 
Oh, she said she liked the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a database nerd, so I'm just absolutely loving it. Loving it. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. So actually, you mentioned this, the database thing. It's actually kind of really, really useful. I found it useful really recently. My wife works for a Nashville business who was impacted by COVID, as so many Nashville businesses were. And what they were, they had to keep track of for the, um, in order to find out what their occupancy restrictions and things like that were, what their projected opening times were going to be, they had to have access to the, is it the county data? I guess the county COVID data. So the county would daily release the numbers on like how many new cases had there been? What was the the hospital bed occupancy like and all these things and these were the factors that we had in place to determine when our businesses were allowed to open etc but we couldn't make any projections based on that data because it was only released a single day at a time and there was no data repository for this data like nobody had access to past data at all so my poor wife would every day have to go to the a safe asafenashville.com, asafernashville, the place, the one place that you could go to find this information every single day and plug all this stuff into an Excel sheet just so that they could track like the trajectory of these things. But this is something you could absolutely go into that website, find the piece of data on the page that you're looking for, and just write a short little script to do this. And if JavaScript isn't your thing, there's also a great library for Python, which is a, a, probably a little more user-friendly even than this is, called Beautiful Soup, which does the exact same thing, has the exact same methods, and is really, really easy to use. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice. 